is Jessica Martinez. I'm a community health worker here with the Gerald L. Ignis Indian Health Center. Um, I am Mascalero Apache and Yaqui Indian. I am not federally recognized by the colonized America, but I am native to this land. Hi, my name is Sarah Barron. I am a community health worker here at Gerald L. Ignis Indian Health Center. I am enrolled at the Menominee Nation. I'm also half Mexican too. My name is Nico Alamo. I'm a community health worker with the Gerald L. Ignis Indian Health Center. I'm also an Oneida descendant. Hi, I'm Shanna. I am a community health worker here at the Gerald L. Ignis Indian Health Center. I am Haudenosaunee, Oneida of Wisconsin Turtle Clan, and a descendant of the Bad River and Red Cliff bands of Ojibwe. What led you to become a community health worker here at the Gerald L. Ignis Indian Health Center? Yeah, so in my previous work, um, I used to work in finance, my degrees in economics, and I felt very bored and unfulfilled with my job. And I sort of came into this role sort of on a whim. Um, you know, I heard that they were um, applying for a community health worker here at the clinic. And so um, I thought teaching people healthy behaviors would be something I would enjoy. And it's really, that's what really happened. Um, I really come to enjoy the work and I have a lot more satisfaction now doing community health work and specifically with public health in general. So I've always worked in healthcare. Um, I used to work for assisted living facilities for people um, with Alzheimer's and dementia and things like that. I've always loved helping people. I think that's just in me to want to. I've always also wanted to be immersed in the indigenous community being as I am indigenous. I love my culture, I love my people. So being able to be, be in a position where I'm able to help them if they need it um, means a lot to me. I kind of love the work of working with people, so I looked into becoming a certified medical assistant. I did that for seven years. After that, I just never seen the close of things. So I would see a patient for 15 minutes, but I never seen the end of whatever concerns that they were coming in with. Um, I became a case manager with Goodwill, and I worked with special needs individuals for about five years. And then I moved up to Duluth. I found a position as a community health worker, and I was able to see the beginning of a concern and go all the way to the end. And that's what really sold me on becoming a CHW and sticking with the position. For me, it was, it stopped at one point. So I, my involvement with them stopped at one point. And I felt like sometimes when you make your connection with people and when they trust you, you want to help them a bit more, but you can't, you know, because that part ends. So I realized being a community health worker would allow me the chance to go a bit further for them, to be a bit more involved, and just to be that person that they can come to and talk to and that they do trust us. So what I do is kind of bridge the gap between medical and patients and things that they may help with. Um, I also kind of facilitate if someone is having health issues, I kind of help address every aspect of that because if you're, you know, stressed about how you're going to pay your bills, you're not going to really focus on, you know, coming in for a physical. So I kind of am a renaissance woman and I kind of like dip my toes a little bit in everything to help you get where you need to be. Um, so you make, you know, you meet so much, so many different faces in the community. You get to learn about their lives, their stories, and a lot of the time it can be incredibly humbling. So I'm really thankful for all of those, for all those connections that I made, you know, helping people and, you know, really connecting with the community. It's different every day. Um, I do house calls, um, so I go to participants' rooms and I speak with them and I assist them at home. I do office calls, so when I have meetings here in the office, I'm working in the clinic and I'm talking with folks there. In between that, I'm helping out with wherever I can. So wolf meals, maybe I'm in the kitchen cooking. I could be at the garden um, planting vegetables, harvesting vegetables. I could be downstairs in the clinic passing out incentive cards to people um, so that we can support them in their health and, and screening of cancers. Um, I could be downstairs working at the command center preventing COVID from coming through our doors. So I could be in a numerous amounts of places. Or so they'll range from bringing in the our clients, our patients, um, kind of outreaching for them to see if they're up to date with their cancer screening, such as breast cancer or CRC, 
So just making sure that there's no gaps in there. Um, it can even range for if we have our food and fitness event happening to where we're reaching out to them to see if they're interested about learning about new diets or um, new ways to shop to save money where they're incorporating healthier foods into their diets. It can even go from us coming into a room to speaking to clients about programs we have available for them at our clinic that are free of charge. About that, what's what's kind of a, some challenging things that you kind of encounter on a day to day basis? I definitely say maybe like the emotional aspect of it. You know, you get more being a community health worker. You're more involved personally with your clients. You know, hearing their stories, hearing their struggles, and your first instinct, if you're compassionate and caring, or just a human being in general, is to want to jump in and help them. And it's kind of hard to carp compartmentalize things like that that are going on rather than me taking it home with me. Um, I think another one of the challenges is, especially in a clinical area, is that people don't really know and understand what my job is doing. What does Jessica do and how does she do it? How is she coming in to play with a patient and what does what could that look like for me? So those are the two biggest question marks out there for, for my position. It can be, very, it can be pretty varied. Um, so there's a lot of different experiences, there's a lot of different um, like tasks that need to be done and you know you really need like a wide breadth of knowledge, you need to you know really be on your game when you know and a lot of things can you know just change at the snap of the fingers. Um, so you know you really need to be quick on your feet, you really need to be um, you know kind of you need to have that in the forefront of your mind that things can really change. And honestly, there's some moments where things feel too big. It feels like too big of even a grasp for us. And that's even a moment where we have to take a step back and realize that even just the small things that we do make a big difference and a big change. I'm blessed to have a boss who is extremely supportive and helpful and she just advocates for us and you know things that we need to do. She's very, you know, like if you need a minute, take a minute, you know, if you if you can't get this done right this second, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you know, take a minute to relax. So, you know, having resources for, you know, diabetes prevention, having resources for housing, having resources for sex education, different things like that is really, you know, it's really needed for our work to be able to provide the best amount of care. But it also, we also need to be mindful of what the community needs first and foremost. So like I mentioned pre-diabetes and diabetes earlier, if that's what our community is really struggling with, having a lot of resources, you know, centered around, you know, diabetes, pre-diabetes, and even, you know, not, not necessarily just pre-diabetes and diabetes, but also um, resources on, you know, healthy access to foods and different things like that. Um, for me, it's, it's always gonna be like open floor communication, open door if I feel like I can go to you and I can talk to you and address issues that we do have. Also too, it's, programs and trainings that can be offered to us. I've had amazing supervisors and by that I mean the nature of our work is so much so that we have to go off and do things on our own so a lot of trust has to be given to me as a CHW to be able to know that I'm going out doing my work and then coming back. So I know that support for your supervisor, um, the support that you have from your supervisor is huge and then that of course is going to come from the support that they have from their supervisor. So that's one thing I know for certain. I just look forward to working with everyone. I look forward to being in the programs and if you see me, say hi. I'm more than willing to help you with anything. I think this is a huge opportunity to service our Native American people and to make sure that they can have success in their lives. Um, and the wraparound service that is designed as part of this uh, facility here CHWs can certainly make to create those bridges, gateways from clinical to behavior health over, you know, straight over to behavior health again, maybe even into referrals. So the support is definitely there and CHW work is designed to do that. So I feel honored to be a part of that process um, and to be able to trust, be trusted to do that. For, for Greater Milwaukee, I'm going to say, you know, take a look at how you're facility can utilize our work the best. I, I know that we can fit someplace and CHW's work is always different. So even though my be, mine may be in a clinical setting, we don't know. For housing, um, 
we could use somebody to talk to people who are homeless and figure out what else their needs are and maybe give them resources so that they can be become more stable so that perhaps they can have a phone and be in connection and not lose that opportunity to get housing. So there's so many ways to um, utilize and to implement CHWs and just know that it's possible. I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, despite being Native myself, I wasn't really entrenched in the community as I am now. And, you know, the Glick community has been so welcoming and so kind. And, you know, that didn't matter that I was, you know, essentially an outsider to them. You know, they welcomed me in open arms. And I really think we've made, you know, a very valuable connection with each other. And so being able to, you know, serve the Glick community for the past two, you know, almost two and a half years has been, you know, it's been an honor. And so I want to thank the, you know, the community for that. I think it's just important to keep in mind that to keep yourself well is to also keep your community well. You can't, you know, pour from an empty cup. So if you're trying to get into this, definitely always look to yourself to make sure that you're doing well. Um, also, I'd like to do a land acknowledgement for the land that we're traditionally on, which is Ho-Chunk, Potawatomi, and Menominee. Thank you.